My name is Amy, and I'm here with Chris from Core Freedom, and he is here to answer a lot of the frequently asked questions about wheelchair ramps. Hi, Chris. Hey. I'm sure the question that you get asked most often is, how much does a wheelchair ramp cost? We get asked that all the time. Almost the first question people ask. It's a very good question. Unfortunately, there's not a simple answer. In a nutshell, the length of the ramp is going to determine the cost of the ramp. So the longer the ramp, the higher the price normally. Okay, that makes sense. When you are trying to give somebody a quote for a wheelchair ramp, how do you determine that and how do you measure for that? We follow ADA guidelines, which say that for every inch of rise you have, you need at least one foot of ramp. And by rise, I mean the distance between the ground and where you're trying to get the ramp to go to. So it could be a door threshold, it could be a porch. Uh, the distance between the ground and that point, you need to measure that, that distance. And for every inch you have there, you need at least one foot of ramp. So for example, if you had 24 inches between the ground and the door threshold, you would need at least 24 feet of ramp minimum. Okay. What about suitcase ramps? So suitcase ramps are a ramp that folds down the middle and it usually has a handle on it, like a suitcase. That's where the name comes from. A lot of times people will call us saying they want a suitcase ramp, thinking they're going to use it for more of a permanent solution to get in and out of their home. Suitcase ramps generally come in lengths between two and eight feet. So in order for that to work, according to the ADA guidelines, we're following that 1 to 12 ratio. The maximum rise you really can have is about 8 inches. A standard step for most homes is about 7.5 to 8 inches. So in, if, you're, if your home has more than one step to get up to where you're trying to go to, chances are it's not going to be safe according to ADA guidelines. On top of that, suitcase ramps don't have railings. So if you're concerned about somebody possibly stepping off the side or falling off and and from a safety standpoint there, it's probably not the way to go. They do have uses for low rises, uh, and usually they're more a, a temporary solution to help someone get in and out of their home in a bind. So basically it's going to be a lot <clears throat> steeper if you try to use a suitcase ramp. If the rise is higher, yes. Okay. So I would I would not recommend if you had three steps, and let's say their your total rise is between 21 and 24 inches, using an eight-foot suitcase ramp is going to throw that slope way out of kilt. So that is pretty dangerous, really, for both the user of the wheelchair and the caregiver, because you can imagine trying to push somebody up or hold them from falling down the ramp or rolling down the ramp too fast on the way down uh, can be quite a challenge. Okay, so next question. What are the different materials that you can use to construct a ramp? So there's really three that we deal with primarily. Uh, aluminum, wood, and concrete. Okay. And can you talk in terms a little bit about the pros and cons with each one, if someone's thinking of going with one over the other? Yeah. So pros of aluminum would be fast installation. They're made out of aluminum modular pieces that we just assemble once we get to your home. Uh, aluminum doesn't corrode, so there's uh, not a lot of maintenance that goes into it. Once it's there, it's kind of there until you're done using it. From a con standpoint, I think people sometimes think they don't look as good as wood, maybe. But then again, we like we have people that, that sometimes say they like the look of aluminum better. So it's really eye of the beholder. But if I had to think of one con, which is hard for me to do with aluminum, I think that would be it. Okay. Is aluminum more portable than the other options? Yeah. So if you were ever to not need the ramp anymore, it's easy to remove it because it literally sits on top of the ground. Um, and it can be moved from one home to another. Uh, you can remove it and sell it. Try to get something back on yeah, your investment. Right. Okay. With wood, and I guess I'm going to wood from here, with wood, you're not able to do that. So uh, once it's there, you're usually putting footings in the ground and it's kind of more of a permanent structure. Maintenance wise, with wood, you're going to deal with a lot more maintenance because if you've ever owned a deck or known somebody who has, it seems like they're always working on it, replacing rot, refinishing it, all those things. This wooden ramp's not going to be any different. Now, the pros to a wood ramp are that it, a lot of people think they look better. Again, I'd be older. When it comes to concrete, concrete is usually built to look like it's part of the home. So your sidewalk maybe ramps slightly up to get to the porch and it looks more like it was meant to be there originally. The downside to concrete would be that over time they can crack. It's more expensive to install and more expensive to replace if you ever have to do that too. Okay. So what about the price difference between the three of them? Are they kind of comparable, not so comparable? Yeah, it used to be that wood and, al and aluminum were separated quite a bit and it was a lot cheaper. But since the pandemic, 
wood prices have gone way up. They've really kind of evened out. So a lot of people are choosing to go the aluminum route because of speed of install and you know, the price is about the same. Concrete's going to cost you a lot more than one of those. Is it possible to put a wheelchair ramp in a garage? Possible, yes. Does it happen most of the time? No. Uh, the reason for that is usually when we're following the ADA guideline, that 1 to 12 ratio, most garages are going to be 24 to 36 inches from the garage floor to the door threshold. If you've got to fit 24 to 36 feet of ramp, in a garage, you're probably looking at a zigzag configuration and therefore eliminating any chance of using the garage for vehicles and things like that. Unless it's a very big garage, it can be very difficult. But no matter what, you're going to drastically decrease the usable space of that. Oh, yeah, for sure. What about insurance coverage? Is insurance likely to cover the cost of a ramp or do people ask about that a lot? People ask about that all the time. A lot of times with insurance coverage, we're seeing people that have been in auto accidents or work comp injuries, things like that. What I always tell people if it's that's not the case for them is to contact your insurance provider. It's going to really be up to them whether they cover it or not. Uh, so it's kind of a... Each situation is yeah, unique. Okay. Yeah. So another question is, I know not every company will offer rental ramps, but your company happens to. So what would you say to somebody if they don't know if they should purchase or rent a ramp? Yeah, so when you when we talk about purchasing versus rental, we're talking to be talking about an aluminum ramp. So we usually tell people that if you are going to need the ramp two years or less, it's worth looking at renting because it's kind of that break even point between what you would pay if you purchase the ramp versus what you're paying over the two years to rent the ramp. It's kind of that two year mark is that break even point. So less than two years, consider renting. More than two years, you might want to look at purchasing. Okay. So maybe like a short-term injury or disability thing, yeah. if somebody had surgery, that kind of right. thing. Okay. I'd say most rentals that we do last between six months to a year okay. on average. So what other options are there in addition to wheelchair ramps? The biggest one we see uh, in place of a ramp is what's called a vertical platform lift. Often when there are space constraints, so maybe it's a mobile home where there's not a lot of room to put a ramp and they've got a very high rise, or what we talked about earlier with garages, sometimes there's not enough room to put a ramp in a space. So a vertical platform lift, what it is, is basically an elevator for a wheelchair. You roll onto it, the platform raises up to whatever level you're getting to, and the gate opens and you roll off onto a platform. You're also going to need a concrete pad, though, so that can cost a little extra money because it needs to sit on concrete. So that could work in a garage, and we would anchor it to your garage floor. Outside, though, if there's not a concrete pad already, we have to pour a concrete pad to set the BPL onto. But they do work outdoors. They do work outdoors, yeah. And actually, most of the ones we install are probably outdoors. However, the cost is a little more than a ramp sometimes, depending on the rise, though. If it's a very high rise, sometimes a vertical platform lift is just as cheap as installing a ramp. But most of them are going to start out at about $10,000. How do you remove snow and ice from an aluminum wheelchair ramp in the winter? So first, you're going to want to use, if you're going to use a shovel, make sure you're using one that's plastic. Using a metal shovel on the, on the metal aluminum ramp uh, can cause damage. You're also going to want, if you're going to use an ice melter, uh, stay away from rock salt. That can actually corrode aluminum. Uh, so you're going to want to use anything that says on the label that it's pet friendly like a pet-friendly ice melter. You can usually find it at a pet store, even local grocery stores and things will carry it sometimes. Do people need to be concerned about a weight capacity with the aluminum ramps? It's something that we ask. We ask that question on the phone when people call and ask you for a ramp. We usually ask the weight of the person that's going to be in the wheelchair. If they're in a wheelchair, what's what kind of wheelchair? Is it a manual chair or a power chair? Because power chairs weigh a lot more. So it's important to consider both the weight of the user and the weight of the chair combined. On top of that, you might have a caregiver that's right there with that person, too. So sometimes it's a matter of adding up the combined weight of the chair, the user, and, and the caregiver. In a nutshell, these ramps are pretty durable and pretty strong, but you're really not supposed to have more than 1,000 pounds per square foot. Well, I hope that answered a lot of your questions about ramps, but every situation is unique. So if there's a question that you still have that you would like answered, Please feel free to reach out to Core Freedom at the number you see on your screen. And thank you for watching and have a great day.